Um, so I'm going to introduce our next speaker, which uh, you might have seen already. Uh, and this is uh, Stein, Stein Dennison. Hi, Stein. <clears throat> so um, Stein is a PhD student at the Freie Universiteit Brussel and uh, focusing on bridging the gap between AI and neurology. And by modeling disease trajectories of persons with multiple sclerosis, Stain tries to predict individual disease courses to allow better clinical follow-up and ultimately quality of life. So Stain is going to talk to us about, well, I don't know if he's going to talk, but uh, he's going to present a paper in a song. Thanks, Stein. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. Thank you so much for this uh, kind introduction, Stefan. Uh, so I uh, already uh, enjoyed the talks up until now and uh, really sets the stage uh, for uh, building on the shoulder of giants, they say. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. So uh, a paper in a song. <laughs> what the hell? Um, <laughs> I can imagine that perhaps that comes a bit of a surprise. Um, it's um, combining a hobby actually with, uh, with what I do, I'm doing a PhD indeed in uh, artificial intelligence and multiple sclerosis. Uh, so I would love to, uh, to guide you through uh, the process uh, that I've gone through to actually get to the stage where I'm uh, at right now. So some disclosures. Um, and uh, first of all, um, it's Polta. So um, look at this uh, nice uh, GIFs here. I, I was actually uh, inspired by uh, all the things that uh, Stefan put in his uh, slideshow earlier um, yesterday. So um, perhaps go to this. So, to this website over here, it's menti.com, and you can enter this code over here. Once you've done that, you should see a question, and then I'm also going to switch my screen. And the question is, then I saw her face, and what is the next sentence that you would expect from that song? It's a lyric, yeah? Then I saw her face and actually the question to you is what is next? So I'm going to just let a robot speak. Hey, um, can you then I saw her face. Yeah. <laughs> can you just quickly show the code again and then we can paste it in yeah, the of chat? Course, sorry. Ah, sorry. 8886 9789. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. Fast. Thanks. Okay, great, thanks. So um, now I'm going just to uh, let a robot speak this sentence. Then I saw her face. I'm going to add the speed a bit. Then I saw her face. Just because I like it. Then I saw her face. I think you get the point. Yeah. As everybody gave an answer already. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds more. What do you think is next in this lyric? I'm not going to give you any other information. Okay, so I think that I can safely switch over now to see the results that we have. Now I'm a believer. Okay, I've got a lot of good questions, uh, good answers, I'm sorry. So uh, yay and kudos if you've uh, indeed guessed that. Uh, so indeed, I'm going to uh, switch over to that, uh, that, that song. Now I can't erase, I see once again, um, uh, so people perhaps doubting a little bit indeed, perhaps because you miss context and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you why. So, the monkeys. Then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. Yes, you can clap your hands. You got it right. So very good. Well done. Um, what am I trying to uh, illustrate here? The thing is that actually, um, why did you remind this lyric? Well, that's actually perhaps because you learned, well, you heard it a lot already. Uh, that's probably the case. Perhaps if you've seen Shrek or you're very much of a Disney, uh, Disney fan, then you might've seen it all already a lot. You can like the song. Maybe you like the lyrics. Ah, I also get uh, people that want to get in. Great, thanks. Um, and um, the fourth book, for example, the rhythm nicely fits the lyrics. And actually, the last one over here, I find that a very good opportunity for science communication. So, so let's put it in an equation. Song is music plus lyrics. What if we put, uh, what, what if we replace the lyrics for a popular summary? So we're just uh, summarizing a paper first in a popular summary 
and then we're going to make lyrics out of it and then we're just going to paste the song uh, behind it and then perhaps match it up a little bit and it uh, hopefully it sounds awesome now a little bit of evidence here i'm not going to give uh, I'm, I'm really not an expert in neuropsychology or psychology or whatsoever i'm just uh, i i um i bumped upon this uh, this evidence over here and i actually really liked it um, the uh, results are a bit contra contradictory. So um, over here, the present study sought to investigate the effect of music at encoding on the subsequent recognition of associated verbal information. And then actually in the results, they say that uh, patients with AD demonstrated better recognition accuracy for the sung lyrics than the spoken lyrics, while healthy other, other, uh, adults showed no significant difference between the two conditions. So it's not a very stable effect. But at the end, they say, um, uh, we propose two possible explanations for these findings. First, that the brain area subserving music pro uh, processing may be prefer preferentially spared by AD, allowing a more holistic encoding that facilitates recognition. But most importantly, and second, that music heightens arousal in prior patients with AD, allowing better attention and improved memory. So what can we learn from this? Well, I guess that we all know that if we have some kind of emotion that we tend to uh, remember things better. And perhaps that's the same here with the song. If we just couple the lyrics, which really have a significant, uh, well, really have a, a scientific value, um, then perhaps people tend to remind it better. So perhaps this is an opportunity. So can be anything. And the, um, in my case, it's my hobby is uh, making music. Um, so I decided to pay, uh, put a paper in a song, but this can be anything. Now, I hope that uh, you will like, because uh, I'm uh, immediately going to switch over to my, uh, to my song that you will see in a minute. Um, there can, of course, be two emotions. Perhaps you really like it, perhaps you really dislike it, but if you get angry out of it or something, that's also an emotion, so perhaps you, you might also uh, remind it better. We're just going to try it out and uh, you can see for yourself whether you like it or not. Okay, and some references. Okay, and then I'm going to switch over to the um, uh, other screen where my song is normally over here yeah so what i want to you to remind you is that every lyric if you um put it through a robotic machine machine as i did earlier then it didn't have any significance but perhaps if i would have sung it and then i saw her face perhaps if i sung it then people would have all guessed it right just because you have some context there is the lyric is put into a musical context and this is what i wanted to explore um I really hope you like this video. This is um, uh, what uh, the result of a paper that was accepted uh, only last week um, in our lab. And um, I immediately, well, I already worked on it for quite, a, quite some time. Um, I made a music uh, video for it. So uh, first put it into a song and then created an animation alongside. So enjoy. Um, I will uh, keep it for this three minutes. I will uh, remain silent. This song's about a brain in a mess. It's like a fairy tale, though this one might not be what you would guess. The brain is made up of many neurons. Each one will transfer a small signal from A to B. Let's not think of them as tiny roads. They're connected at cities, also known as nodes. In summary, a tiny road map is what we made. What would it look like from the sky? How would it be displayed? A satellite will photograph the road map from above. We now can count the roads if the photos made on a sunny day. But imagine a dreadful day with many clouds Some roads might not reveal their whereabouts To count the roads a satellite might not be the best technique Depending on the weather, the roadmap might play hide and seek 
This is similar to our findings in the brains of MS. Our study scanned the brain with a technique called fMRI. The activity of brain regions can be measured with a magic eye. In a mess, we found a problem to be present when doing so. Essentially, the quality of the scan is rather low, similar to the roadmap from before. Some connections in the MS brain might be ignored. So if we want to study connections in the MS brain, fMRI is not the best choice, for the network might be stained. A biased network, well, false relations might be drawn. For example, with cognitive problems in MS, which are well known, let's strive for the extraction of good networks. fMRI might be less suitable as errors learn. Okay, so uh, that was it. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen over here. Just returning to the, to the video over here. Let's see if I can drag screen in the correct screen again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I see a lot of clapping hands, so I'm glad you liked it. Um, the idea that I want to convey here is not only that you should put your uh, your paper in a song. It's it's an example for me. It's really uh, it also costs a lot of effort. Um, it, it's also something that we perhaps might discuss in the panel. But just use your creativity. I'm sure you have one because everybody has one. Um, to just make something out of your uh, out of your paper, make it make it accessible to others, just in your unique way. Because if you're doing it the way you like it, then everybody will uh, feel your enthusiasm. And I hope you've all also felt mine uh, to convey this message. So thanks for uh, for having me, OpenMR, and uh, yeah, I'm very curious uh, to discuss the results. If you have any questions, then uh, you can reach out to me.